Nick Wilson is not only supporting, but has introduced a bill that would reclassify incest in the state of Kentucky to not include your own first cousin. Ain't nothing changed, nothing new here to see. This ain't nothing but some political maneuvering. America! Welcome to the eulogy, eat it up. It's called political buffoonery. Hey there, everybody, and welcome to This Week in Dumb Democracy, where we showcase some of the dumbest newsmakers of the week. And in this video, the emphasis is heavily on the word dumb. Okay, okay. <laughs> Go! How dumb do you ask? Well, we have a former reality TV star turned politician who committed a bit of a boo boo in a very stereotypical way, who was called out by a co star on the same reality show turned New York attorney who may have stepped into it a little bit too much with the virtue signaling when it came to the issue she wanted to raise. I'm so confused. Don't worry, I'm here to walk you through it all. But before we get into this whole sordid story of buffoonery, please subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any other shows. And if you like what you see in here in this or any other video, smash that thumbs up button like, comment, share the show with your friends, all that good stuff, because all of that helps with the YouTube algorithm. Feed me! Thank you guys so much for all that you do to help out with the show and getting the word out about it. You're doing such an amazing job of liking and sharing and all the stuff I ask you to do. Please keep it up. It's absolutely freaking amazing. But let's get into this story. This one's for shits and giggles, folks. Nick Wilson, who won Survivor in one of the, I don't know, 150 seasons they had, is now a state representative in the state of Kentucky. And he recently filed a bill to remove the familiar relationship of first cousins from the state's mm, familial intercourse prohibition laws. Ew. If you're thinking that this is going to get a little messy, you're probably right. Because this was picked up on by another Survivor castmate of Wilson's, who happens to be a public defender in the People's Republic of New York City, really chastising Wilson for his beliefs and for filing this bill. But it turns out the bill filing was a mistake, and when you do a deep dive into the laws concerning these familiar relationships Ew. around the country, maybe the New York attorney should look to her own state to see exactly what the laws are there before throwing stones at the glass houses in Kentucky. I know I'm speaking pretty nebulously, but it's all going to come clear in the end. Let's get into it. The New York Post picked up this story based upon this video posted by Eliza Orleans, who also was on Survivor. She's an attorney from the People's Republic of New York City, and she's been following Wilson's political career pretty closely because their views are against each other, really. She's more liberal. He's pretty conservative. So when Nick Wilson put forth this bill that she's going to be discussing with you, I'll let her explain what it is. It really created an uproar for Orleans to the point where she had to post this TikTok video. Oh, my God, I've got some wild news. I'm Eliza Orleans, career public defender in Manhattan for the last 14 years, but also, as some of you may know, I was a contestant on Survivor Vanuatu and Survivor Micronesia Fans versus Favorites. Oh, excuse me a second. You, you dropped a few titles there. I, I want to give you time to pick them up before, uh, before we continue. That's clout chasing right there, in my opinion. Right off the bat, I think she's setting up, oh, I'm an attorney, and I'm this famous person, so you should listen to me on both counts. Let's indulge her, shall we? This news relates to David vs. Goliath, winner of Survivor, uh, Nick Wilson, who then leveraged the fame that he obtained from winning Survivor to run for Kentucky State Legislature and get elected. Nick Wilson is not only supporting but has introduced a bill that would reclassify incest in the state of Kentucky to not include your own first cousin. Kentucky, like so many other places, is facing a lot of issues, and this is Nick's top legislative priority. He is 
so you get where the stereotype comes in, right? We're talking about Kentucky. We're talking about familial relations with first cousins. I, I don't need to fill in the blanks. You, you guys know. You're, you know. You know what I'm talking about. Sponsoring this bill, and in fact, he has introduced this bill. I am not exaggerating nor being facetious. This is House Bill 269, an act relating to incest. It was already introduced. And as you can see, the sponsor is N. Wilson. That's Nick Wilson. And this is to remove cousin from the list of familial relationships. This okay, so let's fact check this right now. See what this bill is all about. And we'll come back to Miss Orleans here. Well, it turns out that House Bill 269 in the Kentucky General Assembly was withdrawn by Nick Wilson. Let's see if we can check the local news to see what happened here. This is from Kentucky.com. Bill filed by Kentucky lawmaker, survivor winner, to alter part of the law was an error. This is interesting. So here's the story. A Republican-sponsored bill that would remove first cousins from Kentucky's criminal law quickly went viral online on Tuesday. But the lawmaker behind it says the much-ridiculed change was in error. Whoopsies! The original text of House Bill 269, sponsored by Nick Wilson of Williamsburg, struck first cousins from the list of familial relatives it is illegal for an individual to do stuff with. Why are you tiptoeing? Other relatives that remained in the statute included parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and siblings. Whew! I'm glad they cleared that up. During the drafting process, there was an inadvertent change which struck first cousins from the list of relationships included under the statute. And I failed to add it back in, Wilson wrote on Facebook Wednesday morning. Let's go to that Facebook post because I happen to have it right here. Ta da! I filed HB 269 yesterday. Apparently, that was Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever it was. The purpose of the bill is to add sexual contact to the statute. Consequently, it only applies in cases of, well, you see the words there, I'm not going to repeat it. So that sort of touching and groping by uncles, stepdads, or anyone with a familial relationship is not included in the law. My bill makes that kind of contact a class D felony. Unless the victim is younger, then it increases to a class C felony. During the drafting process, there was an inadvertent change which struck first cousins from the list of relationships, and I failed to add it back in. My bad. During today's session, which was Wednesday, I will withdraw HB 269 and refile a bill with the first cousin language intact. So it seems like he's owning up to a mistake here, and I appreciate that. Listen, it's pretty buffoonish to not put that language in there, let's face it. We're talking about Kentucky here, we're talking about this type of law, and we're talking about all the stereotypes that go along with it. So you can imagine, people on social media had a good laugh about this. But not Orleans, who got pretty sanctimonious about Nick Wilson to the point where I believe this is more than just raising awareness about legislation. It's virtue signaling and vendetta. This is truly insane. You may remember last year he introduced and co-sponsored this violent, horrific anti-trans legislation, and then he ended up not even voting in favor of it after a ton of people, you know, flooded his office with calls and kind of there was a huge backlash, and that was thanks to a lot of the survivor community. Ah, so now the agenda comes clear. She's brigading. She's mustering the survivor fan community to go against this other Survivor contestant because of his views. And it seemingly worked when it came to another piece of legislation, if you believe what Orleans was saying. Now, again, it could be that the legislation was flawed in a way. It didn't have support from any other backers. Or maybe Wilson had a change of heart and he changed his mind. People are entitled to do that. I don't know. It could be any number of reasons. I'll take Orleans at her word for it, but I'm getting this social justice warrior brigading feeling from her. 
and I'm hoping that you all will do the same with this bill. See, that's exactly what it is. She's trying to brigade against Wilson over this legislation. But remember, Orleans is an attorney licensed in New York, which means she should know the law in New York. And after the break, I'm going to show you the law in New York, and you're going to be a little bit surprised. Like what you see so far? Go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. Also, leave us a comment and tell us what you're thinking. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another show. What you're looking at right now is a map that I found on the Washington Post concerning where in the United States first cousins can marry. If you look at the green sections, those are the places where cousin marriage is legal. If you look at the yellow, that's where it's prohibited. If you look at the orange, that's where first cousin marriage is legal under certain circumstances. And look what states are in the green. Hint, it's not Kentucky where you think it would be. The People's Republic of New York allows first cousins to marry. You gotta be shitting me. I'll say it again. The People's Republic of New York, among other states, including California, Florida, states in the South, Connecticut, Massachusetts, they allow first cousins to marry. Holy Kentucky, Batman. You want to talk about hypocrisy coming from a New York attorney decrying a bill that would make Kentucky the same as New York? Smugness, self-congratulation, and hypocrisy. How about you advocate for changing the laws in your own state? This, to me, screams out that Eliza Orleans is a justice warrior. The justice warrior is discussed in my book, Schnooks, Crooks, Liars, and Scoundrels, A Field Guide to Identifying Political Buffoons, that's available right now on Amazon, at Barnes & Noble, and other online bookstores. The justice warrior is a person who may have found success in other fields, like Hollywood, for example, or reality TV, and now we're trying to use that clout, or the lack of clout that they had in Hollywood that sort of faded out, trying to use that clout in the political arena. I'm Eliza Orleans, career public defender in Manhattan for the last 14 years, but also, as some of you may know, I was a contestant on Survivor Vanuatu and Survivor Micronesia Fans vs. Favorites. Eliza Orleans is also an attorney, so she does have other skills, obviously, but clearly she's trying to use her cred with the Survivor community to go after Nick Wilson for a law that New York already has. In fact, I'll give you one better. New York is so bad when it comes to domestic relations of the familial kind that they go beyond first cousins and go way beyond what you would find in a stereotypical place like Kentucky. So that graphic that I showed you where first cousins can get married across the United States, including in New York, that was from 2005. The law has since expanded in New York to allow half relatives, including half uncle and half nieces, to be married in New York. This is, again, from the Washington Post from Eugene Volokh, a very noted attorney and writer that publishes work in the Washington Post. You may have heard of the Volokh Conspiracy, very well-read uh, publication online for attorneys. He wrote this back in 2014, and he includes within the article a review of the domestic relations law in New York. Buckle up, buddy! Section 5 of the domestic relation law reads, a marriage is void when the relatives are, whether legitimate or illegitimate, between either an ancestor and a descendant, parent and child, Ew. siblings, brother, sister, or uh, either of the whole of the half-blood, and uncle and niece, or aunt and nephew. Ew. And then they look at section three of the law to determine whether a marriage is similarly void when it is between uncle and niece of the half-blood. And ultimately, as you saw from the headline, it allows that marriage to occur. Welcome to New York. The courts interpret the law as saying that, quote, if the legislature had intended that its interdiction on this type of marriage should extend down to the rather more remote relationship 
of half-blood between uncle and niece. I can't believe I'm reading this in 2024. It could have made suitable provision. Basically, the courts are saying that if the legislature intended to prohibit that sort of really, really bad marriage, they would have done so. Therefore, the appellate division is saying that without direction from the legislature, then you could do it. And it just uh, threw up in my mouth a little bit. Now, what does this exploration have to do with anything? Well, let's take it back to this attorney from New York, Eliza Orleans, who is from Survivor. She basically was brigading people to go after Nick Wilson for deigning to introduce legislation similar to her own home state. Well, it turned out to be a mistake, but that's besides the point. If Orleans thinks that this sort of familial relationship is so icky, and by the way, we should all agree that, ew, this is horrible, then why isn't she brigading on behalf of New York residents to change the law, to have the legislature take up this first cousin relationship and these other relationships that have been on the books for years and clean up her own house before she worries about what's going on in Kentucky. She tried to play on a stereotype of both Republicans and Republicans in Kentucky. And honestly, she may have stepped on a rake by doing so. At least that's what I'm seeing from the law here. At least that's just my opinion, guys. I want to know what you think about all this. Is Eliza Orland's virtue signaling? Did Nick Wilson just make an honest mistake? I want to know where you stand on all this. And I hope you stand with me in saying that this whole situation, this whole sordid saga is the definition of just the cringiest of the cringe. I can't believe we're talking about this in 2024, but leave me a comment anyway, and let me know what you think about this and any other shenanigans and buffoonery that's going on every day this week in dumb democracy. All views and opinions expressed here are not necessarily of the mainstream media and may offend some listeners. It's called political buffoonery.